Welcome students. This is going to be a fairly brief tutorial, I think, about texture painting. Um, so we're going to use the Sparky model here as our test guinea pig, our, our test case. Uh, just really quickly, let me turn the subdivision surface modifiers back on here so that we can actually kind of see what this thing looks like. Okay, so to start off, um, texture painting is a really powerful way of actually, it's as if we could kind of take a can of spray paint and paint the textures that we want onto our model. But it's a little more powerful than that even. We're not just painting colors, or in other words, the diffuse channel. We can also paint, for instance, what we want to be glossy or what we want to be metallic. We can paint uh, masks, essentially, for different material attributes. So let's just start with uh, Sparky's body here. And uh, one of the first things that we need to do is we need to go to our shading uh, workspace here. And that gives us kind of a view of the shader that we're using, which as you can see right now, it's just a principled shader uh, with a base color and not an awful lot of um, detail going on here. It's just kind of orange. Matter of fact, let's uh, go into a material preview here so we can see what that looks like. So let's change this up a little bit. Um, first of all, I don't actually mind the orange. Um, you know, so that's that's not too bad. We might reuse that color later, but let's uh, let's just for the sake of argument, let's try something else. So. Uh, I have to, in order to be able to see what's going on on the body here, I'm going to be painting essentially a raster image, like a JPEG or a PNG is a raster image. I'm going to be painting that. And in order to see the results that I'm going to have uh, in real time showing up on the body as I paint, I have to have that raster image plugged into the material, which right now its base color is just based on this RGB mix. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to add a an image texture. So Shift A, go to Texture, and add an image texture here. We're just going to plug this right into our base color, and we get that uh, typical magenta um, lack of a color here. Well, that's going to show up black for us in our look dev, um, but you can see in our preview over here it's just magenta. So now what I'm going to do over here in our image preview, I'm going to actually make a new image. So I click on new and I'm going to call this sparky underscore body underscore color. And for my resolution I'm going to give myself maybe 2K resolution, 2048 by 2048. And uh, I can generate this as blank, or I can generate it as a UV grid. Um, let's just do a UV grid for now. And click OK. And you can see that that gave me a 2048 pixel, square pixels, um, sparky body color image. And that didn't change anything over here because our image texture node doesn't know to use this image. So if I click this little icon here, I can see that my sparky body color is now there, and I can map it on. And that's great. Okay, you can see it's mapped on really strangely. Um, and that's because I'm not UV unwrapped here yet. I haven't actually unwrapped this um, mesh. So let's go over to our UV editing tab or workspace and you can see that that's already tabbed me into edit mode on the object I had selected and if I tap A to select all it shows me over here what uh, how those vertices correspond to whatever image I want to pull up. Right now it's set to a different image so let's pull up our sparky body color and you can see that the overlaps really weird. I've got pieces overlapping other pieces and that's because we haven't actually unwrapped this. So over here in my 3D view, I can either just tap the U key or else I can go up here to the UV menu and just 
I have all these options for unwrapping it. And I'm just going to choose Smart UV Project uh, since I don't have any seams marked or anything here. This will kind of do it automatically for me. I'll just choose the defaults and click OK. And you can see over here now that everything's a lot more organized and we've got pretty consistent size in the checkerboard uh, squares on Sparky. So that actually did a good job of unwrapping the body. The head hasn't been unwrapped yet. You can still see it's weird, but we're focusing on the body right now. So that smart UV project did a good job for us. And now it's UV unwrapped. We can actually start painting on this thing. So let's go over to our texture paint. And you can see our look here is a little different, but uh, we can now paint on this uh, character. So uh, if I tap, or sorry, if I click this tab right here, you see I've, I'm in my tool settings and I'm set to paint in my texture slots I'm in the material mode and sparky body color is the image that I have selected uh, we're going to paint on a different one in a little while too um, but we'll get there so right now we have just our draw brush selected and I'm going to select a nice really neon green my bracket keys will allow me to increase or decrease the size of my brush and you can see I'm painting on the image I created and I'm painting on the body. I can see where that shows up and it actually maps it to the UV map for me. Uh, currently my strength is only at 0.7. Let's turn that all the way up so that I'm actually painting with full opacity and I can just kinda come in here and I can say okay this is uh, this is the look that I want. This is where I want it to be green. Oop. I can really zoom in here and kinda get details. I'm having a little bit of a hard time getting into that tight corner in there. Might have to switch modes later for that. Um, so this brush has a particular look to it. You can see it's kind of hazy on the edges, a little, a little uh, soft. I can change that under um, the, I think it's the fall off here. I've got different curves that I can apply. So if I want super hard edges, I can just choose that blocky look there. Uh, I can actually edit these curves manually as well. Um, I usually like something with a little bit of softness to it anyway. All right, so now let's maybe pick a different color just to kind of demonstrate how things can look here. And there's a lot more power to this than we're kind of initially even using here. Um, for instance, under this texture, I can actually choose a texture for my brush. I can I can uh, I can uh, add textured brushes, kind of like you do in Photoshop. Um, you know, this is like I say, going to be a fairly quick tutorial, so we're not really going to go there. Um, the more I try to paint, so I just tried to paint like the whole thing there, uh, and it's going to go really slow because uh, my brush size stays the same in screen space. So when I zoom out, my brush covers a lot more territory uh, than it does when I zoom in. So let's just kind of get this guy good and covered quick as we can and then we'll go into how to paint maybe a mask or a specular map or something like that I might be running into um, these problems in the corners I'm noticing like these corners don't paint in well I wonder if that might be because my subdivision surface uh, no, it doesn't seem to doesn't seem to be affecting that. Okay, so we've got 
bright red sparky here now. I'll have to figure out what's going on with those edges sometime. And he's got, let's see, let's go back, back to our brush settings. I've got a little eyedropper here in case I want to resample an old color. So we'll go back to this green and just kind of give him a stylized green stripe here. It's his green honor sash or something. I don't know. Okay, so that's kind of fun. Uh, quick and dirty. All right, so let's go back to our shading workspace here. You can see our shader, like we, we've now painted this image. One important thing to remember is we have not, if I click on my image menu here, you can see that image has an asterisk next to it now. That's because I have not saved this image. It's got to be saved somewhere in order for it to uh, stick around after Blender quits. So what I'm going to do is click image, save as, and I've got my textures folder here and I'm going to just call this sparkybodycolor.png. That's its default. We'll save that image and now you can see that this updated a little bit. This kind of jumped and that's because this is actually now saved on the hard drive. If I quit Blender this image will still be there when I pull this back up. Otherwise I'd lose I'd lose whatever work I just did. Um, okay so what we're gonna do is we are now going to make a new image. So under image we'll click new again same resolution and this one we're going to call this sparky underscore body underscore specular or spec we'll just call it spec and that can be a UV grid as well so now what I need is I'm going to plug this into this specular input and that will determine how shiny um, how shiny sparky is so shift a texture image texture and this time I'm going to pick sparky body spec and plug the color of that into our specular input here. Now I'm going to go back to texture paint and you can see since that's the last one I had selected it's already selected over here sparky body spec. I can choose to paint on either one of these images now but we're going to paint on sparky body spec and it really, uh, since this is kind of a mask, it only makes sense really to paint in black and white. So I'm going to just start with white. And we can actually just come over here and we can start painting on the whole image. And that's one way we can get those color corners later as well, as we can go back in and just paint on the image. So let's just paint the entire image white. Um, when I create the image in the first place I can actually just tell it to be white or black you know I can pick a color okay so at this point now I can choose uh, I can start painting in the opposite color and for that part I'm going to paint on the model and I might come in here and just let's see let's uh, I'm going to undo that and I'm going to choose a little more of a feathering um, brush here so that we have kind of a little less. I don't really want stark differences between the places that I don't want hard edges I guess on between places that should be shiny and places that should not. Okay so that's probably good enough for a quick demo anyway. Let's just make one of his hands shinier than the other. It'll be kind of like Michael Jackson here. One glove. Because it's cool. 
Okay. So now if we go back to just our layout and we look at our material preview here. Actually, let's even look at a rendered preview. You're going to see differences in shininess where we've painted and where we haven't. Uh, differences in the amount of specularity. Another thing we can do with that same image, let's go back to our shading menu, uh, we can also plug the color of this into the roughness uh, which determines how shiny things are. So now you can really see a difference if we zoom in to where we painted, uh, let's see, I'm trying to remember if that's black or white. If we zoom in, okay, so where we painted black, it's the roughness is down to zero, which makes it mirror-like and smooth. And where it's white, you can see it's more of a matte surface. The roughness is all the way up to one. Um, so that is a good way to kind of make your surface have different qualities. Another thing we can do here is instead of going to just roughness, we can take that color into metallic and that will affect what color our specular highlights are um, because metal tends to add a tint or a color to its specular highlights um, so that makes it appear more metallic um, where let's see it looks like it's more metallic where it was white instead of where it was black so if we want it the other way we can just add color invert add that node between the metallic and the sparky body spec. One thing that we cannot forget here, okay, yeah, and you can see the shiny parts look really metallic now. Kind of fun. One thing we can't forget to do is, remember, we've got to save this image. We've got our asterisk here next to our image. Whoop. Image, save as, sparky body spec. We're going to save that in the same spot. Okay, and now if I close this out and, uh, you know, if I save my blend file and reopen, I'll still have this specular map. If I don't save it, it disappears when I close Blender. That's important to remember. Uh, and there's not any kind of warning message like, hey, you've got an unsaved image here. Do you want to save it? So remember to save. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. And uh, I hope you're all having a good apocalypse.